Welcome to the Unstick Your Mind podcast on Mimika TV. Get ready to get unstuck, align with your true purpose, and unlock your God-given potential. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I'm so excited to introduce you to a new guest today. Now, this lovely lady knows more about me than I know about her because she found out about me through my book, which is amazing. Isn't that amazing how books are major tools for ministry yes. and business? <laughs> we got to love it. Well, let me introduce you today to Crystal Day. She's a dynamic kingdom entrepreneur, award-winning author of nine books, sought-after inspirational speaker, certified Christian life coach, and sold out Jesus girl. Growing up in poverty and being told she would never be successful, Crystal became resolute to not settle for mediocrity, but instead she uses her story to impact lives globally. After living a life of partying, poverty, and promiscuity, and being abused and struggling with feelings of inadequacy, she encountered Jesus in the midst of her brokenness. Since then, she's committed to living a life of faith, obedience, and purpose. She now is so passionate about empowering women to deepen their intimacy with God discover their identity and use the message to impact lives. She's a, a global book coach, a CEO of Daylight Publishing, her own podcast. And this girl is busy. I tell you, she has been uh, featured <laughs> on so many different um, media platforms. Uh, she's the girl, to, the girl to follow. So I'm so excited to have you on the show, Crystal. Welcome to Mamiki TV. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I am excited. I'm excited to have this conversation. Um, and, you know, just whatever you, I'm ready to share with your audience. I think that I'm excited to share with your audience. So let's go. Oh, I'm, I'm super excited. And of course, you know, we both love books. We both love Jesus. We yes. both love business and podcasting. So we have a lot in common. And we have accents. Everyone else has I thought accent. about that. I was like, you got two accents today. <laughs> so I'm here in Kingston, Jamaica right now. I was going to say Jamaica and yes. South African. So if this is this is going to be interesting for our listeners, you're going to have a fun time with deciphering what we say. And we talk fast. So you might need to slow us down. <laughs> but that's okay because we are super excited about sharing these these topics and being passionate when you have that inside of you like no matter where you come from you yes. know that there's something bigger especially when God starts to turn up the engine and the volume of what he wants you to do so I'm excited to dive into this but before we get into the juicy bits tell us a little bit about your backstory and how you got into doing what you're doing today <laughs> um, so this is probably one of my favorite questions because it allows me to just share the story and the transformational power of Jesus Christ. So as you mentioned, I currently live in Kingston, Jamaica. I was born here and I tell people I grew up financially poor. So, you know, I was born in a very humble background, you know, but I, I say financially poor because I felt like we were rich in love as a family. I'm the eldest of five children children my, my mom has five four with my father and she got married and I have a little sister and I just remember growing up one I remember my father used to always tell me that you know I'm special you know I will do great things in the world um you know that's why they name it crystal but then sometimes I would say my reality didn't always line up with okay you want to be be and do good great things but financially you know some days you can't go to school because you know you don't have lunch money or there are days that you go to your bed hungry because you have no food and you know just the poverty sometimes it didn't always feel aligned but I just remember being very motivated from when I was young to do to make my family proud and to ensure that we grew come out of the inner city and for us the inner city is similar to the projects in the U.S. you know where a lot of low-income families are there and so I did the right thing you know I was very active in school I excelled in school I went to college part-time so I worked a full-time job went to college part-time I got the degree I got a good job and you know I was just making strides of of course through that little you know through your journey there are many things because like you mentioned you know at age nine I was molested at age 16 I did an abortion and you know I was just very promiscuous so it's almost like I want person's a picture part of me like the day during the day I'm this career girl and focus on school and doing well and you know excelling career-wise but 
I would say personally, you know, I didn't value myself personally. You know, I, I made many bad decisions regarding men. And in 2013, um, so I got baptized in 2009, but I did not like truly, truly surrender my heart to Jesus Christ until after I got pregnant in church in 2011 and, and 2013. I just remember this conviction that there was more to life than this. And, you know, just acted on that conviction, you know, January the 1st, 2014, I was at a party and I was like, Lord, this is not what I want to do in my life. I, I just feel like there's so much more. And that's how my journey, my real journey with Christ. So I got baptized. Anybody that knows Jamaica knows Jamaica as a very religious country. You know, we we have devotions in school. I went to Catholic school. So, you know, you have the prayer, um, you know, you I mean, when we go to party, we play gospel music at the end. So we feel better and safe, you know. Um, so it was re very religious, but not relationship based. And it's almost like a very graced also. The, the, the grace of God was also very known. So you know that if you did something bad, you can go to God and um, ask him to, to forgive you. But, you know, I tell people my true journey started in 2014, where I started to just pursue purpose. And this is where all of this crystal come from, you know, realizing that I have a gift of writing, realizing that I'm a great communicator, you know, I can speak, I teach, uh, coaching got introduced. And the life I'm living now, the truth is, while I'm very I, I do, I did very well in school and I know that, you know, I could do the doctorate and all of that and excel. The truth is the impact, the legacy and just the purpose that I've been able to walk in would not have been possible outside of my surrender. So I stop here. Mm, I love that. Oh, tell you, this could be a movie. Like seriously, it's so <laughs> dramatic, but so amazing. And I love that part about how you know, your life really only began when you found and aligned yourself with Jesus. It's like we wander and we wander and we go out and we try this. And and it's like that that whisper of that voice is always saying, you should be doing something else. Like, hey, come and have a look here. You're in the wrong wrong room. You need to be somewhere else because that little voice gets louder and louder. And believe me, yes. it starts to yell at you when you, you're like, okay, time to get aligned, right? And uh, I just love that. So, and also your story. I mean, we've talked about, mentioning we both love books and we both publish and write books and they are just amazing how when you look back and you can learn from someone else's story yes. so you know if you are encouraged and you're listening to crystal today then definitely no, no matter what your situation looks like there is always a way when you are aligned with with god and so for, for our listeners today like i'd love to dive into some sort of meaty tips of how like if they're feeling like maybe they're in a job they hate or maybe they're they, they're feeling a calling to start a ministry or a business or they they're doing all the things they're busy they're running on fumes they're burning out uh, the perfectionist polarisis overthinking how do you take those steps because I mean in your situation it almost seemed like if someone looking in would have said oh it's impossible for you to do anything good right how did you do it like give us some steps yes you know I love this question because I am um... I'm, I believe in practical Christianity, right? I do believe that while, you know, we can have this theory of things, I do believe that, you know, Jesus through his parable tried to tell people, oh, these are the practical things. That's why he used, you know, different parables. So if somebody is like listening, uh, somebody's listening, they're like, okay, but Crystal, I don't know if this is possible for me. One, I'm going to start with I living Jamaica, <laughs> right? So most like I'm from a third world country that the truth is the idea of being paid to speak and coach and these things. A few years ago, I didn't even know what an email is. A blog, like I have clients that I coach now that I've never heard about a blog. You understand? And I know in the US, it's a little bit like it's different or in the, the, the you know, most um, first world country. So first, I want if the question that you might be asking yourself, is it possible for me? I go to Mark, you know, it says nothing in, is impossible with those who believe. And you, I think it starts by that mindset of believing that it's not just crystal that is possible for, or it's not just Mimica is possible for, or it's not just, no, like everything that we're doing now, it started with this mindset that 
I can do it too, right? And I want a partner. And that's another thing I think number two would say, you know, it's a desire to, to use my gifts or to find the gifts so that I can use it to impact others. Because one of the things I recognize is that sometimes, especially as women, we focus on on okay what can i do for me what can i do for me and when you start to ask yourself what problem can i solve right what am i passionate about what contribution can i make cuz i was in this i was in a 9 to 5 job i was doing very well you know at age 24 remember based on how i grew up you know i grew up in a boarders outside bathroom facility i mean you know and at age 24, I was able to buy my first home apartment the first time I'm living in a concrete structure inside bathroom, right? And at, I'm now 24, 25, you know, just had a baby. I was engaged to get married and there was just still this longing. And this longing that like crystal, yes, you have accomplished all of these things, but what is the contribution you're going to make to the world? And for me, it started with, um, mentoring teen girls, right? Because I remember, you know, just as a teen girl, I wasn't exposed to a lot of things. I didn't feel like, I felt like there was not a lot of opportunities for me. So I wanted to go into the communities that I was a part of. And that's how my ministry started. Like I literally had a ministry where I mentored teen girls. And then as I grew, as I gave back, then I started to, to share my story online about the transformational power of Jesus Christ and, you know, the things I used to do. And the more I posted you know I started to blog and the blogs get becoming viral and you know you just start doing little things and this is where I'm at right now so if I could go back and share um specifically I'm gonna say five steps right now one is dealing at accepting and believing that it is possible for you so working on that mindset portion two I would say um having a desire for more right because a lot of the truth is a lot of women that I've met they talk the talk to say oh you know I don't I'm not comfortable in my job but when you make it when you when you know it's a desire when you start googling solution for this problem right so you want to, to deepen your desire to, to to do more and to be more uh number three I would say is to know try to find a problem that you can solve right and you can start little right you probably want to you have you have um had a miscarriage and you just want to encourage other persons who have had miscarriages right and you interview persons on a podcast that have had miscarriages or probably you have lost your husband or you know there's like there's endless amount of topics that you can give a contribution to. Um, number four is now find a platform, right, that you can now create a community around so that persons can see you as an influence in that area and to add your voice in that area. So I would say that, and then I would definitely say number five would be um, just align your values to whatever you are doing, right? So we are on a Christian show, so we are boldly able to talk about Jesus Christ. But I've been invited to platforms where if I, I feel like I'm going to, for example, here in Jamaica, years ago, I was invited to speak at the U.S. Embassy. Now, based on what I've been told about the embassy, you know, I heard that you can't talk about God, all of that. And I remember when the call, I said, you know, I don't know if I'd be able, I, I feel comfortable to speak while I won't push Jesus in your face at all, because I don't believe, you know, we should force people to take up Christ, but I do believe that I should be authentic to talk about my story. And I cannot say I could have, I cannot talk about my story without sharing that God was a part of my journey. And, you know, they were able to say, no, we have seen you online and we've seen what you're about and we want you to be you, right? But in the initial stage, many persons, when I said, you know, I wouldn't have accepted it, they felt like, oh, no, no, no. So I would say just align your values to whatever you're doing. So those would be the top five tips. Mm, love that. I hope everyone was taking notes because if you have to go back and make some notes, definitely do that. But I love how the first one you mentioned was you need to believe that it's possible because I think there's this almost like this, what I call a celebrity factor. Oh, it's good for her because she's lucky or she's famous or she's whatever. But sometimes it's got nothing to do with that at all. Cause God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't show favorites. It's like, if you are willing, 
he will use a donkey. Like he, as long as you're available and say, okay, use what I have, bring your loaves and fishes uh, where you are. And I love how it's like how God is always in, instilling in you, like something more, like right? something bigger, something bigger. Um, and I think that we are, really are in the age of authenticity because we can't continue to be something we're not. Yes. And a lot, I know a lot, you know, a lot of my um, audience and clients are always like, well, how do I integrate my faith? And without pushing Jesus, it says you be yourself. Like if someone is having a bad day, how do you encourage them? I mean, I'm not saying go and lay hands on them and start, you know, we, we're depending on where yes, you're Yes, 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 yes. But, you know, yes. like allowing God to speak through you. And that's why I feel like where we are, we, we are walking at ministry in our businesses, in our workplace, yes. in our families, in our homes. And I love how by putting those those pieces in the story, it, like it all comes together. It's like a little puzzle, right? And then, of course, we, we talk about books and platform. Um, and I think that's that's important too. It's like when you are ready, and you healed and you've gone through the process of it, you know, you've walked it out, you've got rid of the junk in your trunk, you've got your mindset right, like, okay, God knows he will, he's asked me to do something and I'm prepared to do it, even if I fear, I feel fearful, right? Then we can put all the pieces into place. Like, you know, I love the idea of book publishing. And I don't know if you're going to talk about this a little bit as a tool, because I think I, I come across a lot of uh, women who say, oh, I want to be an author, I want to be a speaker, but sometimes it's got to be more to that. Being an author and a speaker is a tool and it creates your platform. But here yes. we're talking about really at the core is your message. So if someone is yes. listening to this and saying, God's saying, I need you, I want you to write your story. Give us a few tips of like, how do they start that process? So it goes from here down to paper. Yes. Listen, like this is one of my favorite topics talking about, you know, just how your story can be in our book, but that a book that can leave a legacy that sells one, but leave a legacy beyond you. And like you mentioned, I love that you mentioned that the truth is many women just come, oh, I want to write my story. Oh, you know, I've been through this and my story is so unique. And while I would say um, yeah, you know, it's it's good to want to write a story. It is more than that. Because as Solomon says, there's nothing new under the sun. So no matter what experience that you have been through, there's not much that you can say that have not been said already. What would make the difference is how you say it and what the lesson that you learn from that story, that will make the difference. No, I say if you're going to start writing a book, the first thing you want to think about one is who am I writing for, right? Um, what is it that I want to write about that will be impactful for someone? Now, even when I say who you're writing for, I want you to be very careful to not say everybody. <laughs> because I tell people like, all I the time- I want to help everybody. Like, oh yeah, every so I'm like, Jesus could not help everybody. He Come needed on. to get 12 people to help him. Yeah. And only then he could only reach a few. Like, hello, if Jesus can't do it, um, yeah. <laughs> Come on now, come on now. And then also I tell people that the Bible is the most read book, the most bought book, and everybody don't read the Bible, right? It's the most translated book, right? The longest book, and everybody don't read the Bible. So I don't know why we think that, you know, our book is going to outlive the Bible. But what we're saying is that, yes, it can be super impactful, but you have to be clear on the problem that your book solves, the solution it's going to offer, who is it for, right? I would also say you want to pay attention to that platform building that we talk about, right? How are you going to build a rapport and how are you going to share the message even before the book comes out, right? Because many of us, we don't have the major platform, the Sarah Jakes, the Heather Lindsay, right? And even them, it took a while for them to create a community that will want to read what they're writing. Um, so similarly, you want to be able to create that, right? Um, I would say, don't make excuses that you can't because again, as a, especially if you're a woman of faith, you should not be using the word can't because you have a Holy Spirit that lives in you that says that you can do all things. It says that greater things that you shall do than Christ has done, right? So to say that you can't do it, then you are, I feel like you're saying God can't, you know, um, which is as a woman of faith, you're saying, God, I can do this through you, right? Um, the final thing I would say about the book writing process is uh, two things. One, please heal, especially if you're writing about your personal story, right? Mm. You want to be, can't be bleeding on the page, right? It's like, like, no, like you're like, like my twin. 
You're like, like I know, right? It's like a sister from another mother. Because I, 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 and this is the thing is I, why I want us just just pause here for a second. Why this is important is if you uh, like writing, and oftentimes I find women that say, "I want to write my memoir, my story." The first thing is just to get it out on paper. It's like you need to like vomit on the page. I know it sounds gross, but clearly you need to get out what's in, but you're yes. not ready to share that until you've completely healed. Because what happens is, I don't know if you've come across, I've read some books where yes. you can tell the tone is they're still bitter. They have got unforgiveness. Yes. They're very accusatory. Yes. Those are things that people don't need to read until you yes. can realize and switch it from a me story to a them story yes then you know you're ready so yeah let's definitely do the healing get the mind in the right position yes. like and you know you're ready when you say i need to help someone who's who's going through what i went through yes as opposed to i need to share my story because i need need to validate my story and i need everyone yes. to know what i went through if you just know where you're at and yes. it's not good or bad yes but let's just make sure because we want god to speak in us and through us right so yes. we need to make sure our heart and our mind are in the right position yes but yeah yes. what was the second thing you're going to say <laughs> i would say um especially if you are a person of faith that's listening i believe that you should prepare for warfare that comes mm -hmm. right now with just writing a book no matter if you're not a person of faith or what there will be the limitations the mindset you'll you'll have time struggles you you'll probably procrastinate computer shuts down and then all of exactly. a sudden you lose a chapter and you're like what the hey <laughs> yes but then i believe that as a believer because your story will leave an eternal impact there is an enemy john 10 says you know 10 10 says that enemies out there to kill steal and destroy so i do believe that believers go through a different level of warfare to get their story out because of the eternal impact that it can have so i would say prepare for that right i've had clients that end up in a hospital that i've met in accident that i've lost loved one in like lost money and you know so many, like they, their life were okay until they start writing a book and a lot of times you don't recognize that it's a, actually a spiritual thing. We just are, we're just looking at it as the physical basis. But I would say, you know, you want to pray through it. You want to fast through it. You probably need to get a community of people that are also praying with you as you write the book, right? Um, I would say get help, especially if it's your first time, you know, get a coach or, you know, somebody to help you through that process and to keep you accountable also. So I would stop there but don't underestimate the power of what God is going to do with and through you, through your book. So like Mimika says, when I, three, about three years ago, I read her book from warrior to warrior, right? And it was, I don't remember what I was typing in, in um, on Kindle, um, probably something about fear, et cetera. And her book came up, I read it, you know, and, and just to see women, I think what drew me to her book was a woman of faith i was in a, a season where i was just looking for more women of faith right that are in business that are being an example right and that's what drew me to her but what if she did not write that book right um and i mean i've seen reviews of these books and it is impacting lives like you know globally so don't I love that. If you're having a bad day just go read your reviews and you will get nasty ones too Let, let's say that the good with the bad right <laughs> yes so as much as we have the warfare and you realize that's important like yeah when you you know that the warfare and the, and the hard that you go through like now the book is still selling four years almost five years later and then the people that just say this impacted my life and I think that's what's so important about this process is when you're on assignment for God it's like you put things out in the world and he's like okay great you've done your job now the next stage of however that seed is impacting others I think is is so important so yes. I love that yes I agree so, so I think you, I, yeah I'd stop there in terms of book I don't want to overwhelm them but I believe that if you start with those um yeah you can definitely get your book written Mm -hmm. exactly and really what this is all about is really coming back to the concept that the power of your story is is impactful we don't know yes. we yes. don't know the end we will only know when we get to heaven how many people who've actually been impacted yes. and i just think we're definitely in a season where god's like i need boots on the ground i need willing able obedient servants who are going to just step up to the plate do the hard get through it knowing without naivety that this comes with the cost 
So again, I love that idea. Like, I wish I had known that when I wrote my book. Like, oh my, my gosh, the delays. And I actually got pneumonia while I was finishing my book. Wow. I'm like, I am going to finish this book. I don't yes. Yes. <laughs> And I'd, I'd realized, especially because I was writing a book on spiritual warfare, ding, 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 hello, should have known that, right? Um, so using this wisdom and these insights, I think is just amazing for anyone who's even thinking about going down this route. But your, your story matters. Like, it does. Even though it's not it new. Yes, it's, it's how the you can unique, say it, right? Yes, yes, yes. And that unique perspective. And one of the things that John Paul taught me a while ago, as you spoke, is to be eternally minded. Because if you are um, just focusing on no and the physical, you will be so discouraged so many times, right? You'll be, your, your emotions and your feelings would say, ah, no, not today. And, you know, so you want to be eternally minded in all that you do that, okay, if I don't sell 1 million copy of my book, but I sell 100, right? What can that 100 do, right? Who can that 100 impact first? Now, I do believe that you should spend time building a platform, marketing the book, et cetera, right? And I, I believe that you have a book about building a platform also, right? Oh, yes. So I've got two <laughs> books for writers. One is right. uh, you know, write the right books. In other words, like we talked about, make sure you, you're writing it for somebody for and for, for a, a problem you're solving, as well as how to build your platform because you still have to do the things. It's not like, yes. it's, you know, we get these divine downloads, but we still have to put the boots on the ground. We still have to show up no matter how you feel, do the work and, you know, the rewards do come. So yeah, yes. it's about being the good and faithful servant, right? Yes. And I wrote a book about, you know, sell more books, impact more lives. And it's just as, you know, a handbook, a marketing handbook for Christian authors, um, you know, just to give them some tools of how they can market their book. And I do believe that because I'm in Jamaica, it, 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 it was very, it was harder for me to try to get my book on an international platform. Right. Um, but if I can do it, if we can do it, then you can too. And that's our encouragement for you today. Exactly. Well, I love that. I mean, we've covered a lot of topics, but at the essence of it all is that if you're thinking about it, God's speaking to you about it, time to put some, some, you know, effort into actually making the baby steps. It just has to be small. Like even I remember this, some of the books um, sitting down and trying to write to it on a blank page was super stressful. So I would just talk it into do a voice memo and transcribe it. Like there is a way, as long as we are like kingdom focused and we know that there's a greater reason for this, we can put up with the heart. We can, we can deal with whatever because we know that at the end of the day, it's going to be so worth it. Well, I know we've covered a lot, Crystal, and yes. we, we've gone through so much. And I know I, we'll have to go back and <laughs> this, make some Yeah, notes. this is a meaty episode. Like, this is like super meaty, meaty, lots of tips. So maybe you need to listen to it twice. And definitely while we're on the, on the topic, go and share it with your friends. Because yes. I'm sure I know I have this conversation a lot of people. Like, how do you do this? And how do you know? It's just to share the tools and the actionable steps. So no matter what God's put on your heart, whether it's to start a TV show or a, a business or a, a, a ministry, it all starts with just taking action, right? So yes. I've got to uh, applaud you for that and congratulate you um, for all the wonderful things you've done in, in, this, in spite of all your be beginnings. So it, it can be done. So I'm super excited. But if we had to leave it out like one takeaway tip, if we could wrap it up in one, one way, what would one takeaway tip be for you'd leave the audience with? Um, I think I'm going to say that your story matters. I think that's a tip. Your story matters. Um, whether you are in corporate, whether you wherever you are serving, your story actually is one of the major tools that you would use to connect with people, right? People love stories because it reminds them that this life is real and we are walking this life all together. So your story matters. So however you feel led to share that story, right? Do not allow the enemy to let you walk in shame and condemnation about anything that you have done or you have been through or have been done to you, right? Don't walk in shame and condemnation. Remember, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? But he would, this is it. He will work all things together for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So your story matters, right? Your story matters. And I want you to just leave this episode to say my story matters. Exactly. Well, there's some sound bites for you. If you need to be able to know what this is and hear that and, 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 and know that it's valuable, I really appreciate that. Well, uh, Crystal, tell everybody what's the best place they can find you and get your tools and hear about you and connect with you online. 
Okay, so again, thank you so, so much for this conversation. Like, you know, it's just, it's just always a pleasure to connect with like-minded women. And I just like everything that you were saying, like you were almost finishing my sentence, like, you know, healing and bleeding. Right? So, I mean, this is just such an amazing episode. So I want to thank you for answering the call. You know, thank you for courageously desiring to share your story with the world and just allowing women like me all oh, no, from like, we're, look how far we are at but we're able to connect and for that I'm truly grateful now I'm all over social media I'm you know very active so you'll find me on um, Facebook you'll find me on Instagram you'll find me on LinkedIn as Crystal C-R-Y-S-T-A-L S-D-A-Y-E I also have my personal website crystalday.com and I do have my business website daylight D-A-Y-E L-I-G-H-T publishers.com um, so yeah you can just reach or connect with me you know share this with somebody as she mentioned and yeah I'm, I'm just easy once you google you'll find me um, awesome. so again you know it's just well, a pleasure yes yeah we will have the show notes yes click the links whatever you uh, platform you're listening or watching on we'll have a little button that'll link you to the show notes and we'll connect you with crystal make sure to let her know you heard and saw her on vimeo tv and let her know your insights like i'd love to know what your thought processes were your aha your comments so add those below um as well we'd love to hear from you but before we wrap up crystal would you be willing to pray for our audience Definitely. You know, even as I speak, I kind of sense that a lot of women are, I think the biggest thing that hinders them is the insecurity of what would people say, what would people, um, you know, what would the reaction be when I share my story? And, you know, it just from my, my newest book, Their Insecurity, is available. And that was, um, you know, just written from a place of, I'm wondering who, like, who, who me? Like, why would I share my story? Why would anybody listen to me? And just overcoming you know that uh, insecurity so that I can boldly share what the gifts that God has blessed me with so you can definitely check out that I really do believe it's an amazing resource because God wrote the book not me I'm just the vessel um, so in terms of praying I'm gonna pray from that basis so Lord we come before you know when I put each and every woman that's listening to this call and even if they should you know with a man that's listening mighty God but I pray that you will just be with them mighty God in their going out and coming in even now that many of them are saying you know the fear is holding them back or you know feeling a little timid mighty God I thank you that your word says that you have not given them a spirit of fear or condemnation but you have given them a spirit of um you know power love and a sound mind so God I pray that you know after listening today that it will give them permission to answer your call father thank you for your daughter who is hosting this um podcast this tv show mighty god i pray that it continues to go to the ends of the earth mighty god continue to use her continue to have just blessings upon blessings upon her mighty god because of her obedience and at the end of the day lord i pray that you know each and every person that's listening this will hear well done well done because we were able to be vessels to bring you glory to bring you honor in jesus name amen amen thank you for that so ever you listening on the in the carpool on the treadmill washing the dishes make sure to uh, really just hear that for today the word that we speak over you and the encouragement for today that you can do it and your story definitely matters and it is worth it so i'm gonna say thanks so much crystal for being on the show and for everyone today Make sure to go and connect with her online. And if whatever platform you're listening on, make sure to subscribe and leave a review if you're listening on our audio platforms. And on, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, make sure to click the little bell for notifications so you can hear when the new episodes come up. Um, and this is going to be super excited. And for more, more freebies that I only give to my newsletter community, go to mamikakuni.com. I always have some free uh, training, as well as you can join our private community where we take conversations offline from these podcasts and really dive into topics so make sure to go to mamikakuni.com and connect with us there but thanks so much crystal i so appreciate it blessings to you yes. and i look forward to the wonderful things we will do in the future <laughs> yes Yay. Th until next time everyone take care <laughs>